Good evening and welcome to University Settlement's annual gala, City Stories, The Power of Us. I'm Baba Israel, Artistic Director of the Performance Project at University Settlement, and I'll be your host this evening. Thank you all for joining us virtually and for your support of University Settlement. It's great to have so many people here with us tonight. And for those of you who are new to University Settlement, let me provide a very brief overview. Over 135 years ago, settlement houses established the idea that everyone, including immigrants and low-income families, should be able to access quality education, decent housing, and access to open space for exercise and health, and support for the aging. The Settlement House movement demonstrated the strength of approaches grounded in partnership and participation while creating models of connected and humane social services that soon set a global standard. Today, University Settlement remains true to its first principle. To strengthen a community, you must strengthen families. And to strengthen a family, you must provide a range of services and support, not just childcare, not just after school programs, not just education for adults or meals for seniors. And we've seen, especially in the past two years, just what a difference our integrated services can make in the lives of our neighbors. Tonight's theme is the power of us. And as the evening unfolds, you'll hear why. We're gonna hear from University Settlement CEO, Melissa Asi, as well as some of University Settlement's frontline heroes who we are pleased to recognize tonight. We'll also hear from our honoree, poet and best-selling author, Kathy Park Hong. Our program is split up in two parts. Congrats, you're already in part one. After this part of the program, we'll all hop over to Zoom, where we're proud to present three breakout rooms with some very special guests, but more on that later. Before we begin, I want to remind you to keep things lively in the chat. University settlement folks usually have something to say, Having technical issues, you'll find directions in the chat to get help along the way. And it's my great pleasure to have this opportunity to thank all of you who have so generously supported University Settlement and this event. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your donations are so appreciated. If you haven't already made a gift to University Settlement, but you feel moved to do so tonight, you can donate online right here. We've made it really easy. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a donate button. And if you click on it, you'll stay on this page while you make your donation. Donors throughout the night will be acknowledged in the chats. So thank you all. Now let's get the show on the road by hearing from and about some of the settlement's amazing frontline workers in a brand new video. Thank you. University Settlement is a team of great strong, dynamic, dedicated people that are embedded in communities in the Lower East Side and in Brooklyn, working in partnership with families to just make sure that people are getting full engagement of their communities. We really look at the needs of the people and try to partner with them to make sure that they have everything that they need to be empowered, thoughtful, productive, special people. We have after school or school age programming. We have programs for pregnant moms, for adults, and our senior services. Everyone from six weeks old all the way through the older stages of life. I've been here 40 years in the community. Being able to work at University Settlement for the last 20 has been a blessing to me. I used to struggle with my housing, but I knew University Settlement was here. And now I'm here and I'm providing information or resources to my neighbors, so that's a great feeling. I have participants who have come in. They've worked all their lives. They lost their employment, and they are so worried about losing their home. Last week, I had a tenant who called, and she's not going to be able to move forward paying her rent. She's 77. She's considering working at CVS. It's very hard. University Settlement have never stopped working. The immediate need that most people walk through is with having rent arrears, and along the way you find out that these are also other essential needs that need to be met. We can make referrals for childcare. We can refer to other family members in that household to our consultation center. It's very good for the entire family. 
Children's Corner is a Head Start daycare program, and we have children from the ages of two to about four or five years old. Kids are very open, and they just speak about how they feel. They're energetic, they're excited to be here. A lot of the parents I've probably met already because I've lived in the neighborhood. I feel like I'm giving back to them by teaching the children. During the pandemic, I wanted to be an example for my own children. I want to show them that it's okay to take care and help your neighbor. So I always made it my business to try to be here every day. I'm really proud of my teammates. We really came together, especially when someone did get sick. We make sure we check on that person and call them. So it's been a really big community and family. A lot of seniors are forgotten and there is nobody there to advocate for them. When they come at the center, it's like a different person. They feel alive. During the pandemic, it was really hard. We trying to do a lot of outreach to make sure that they're okay. We was there every single day. We help with meals. We help with social services. We help them make doctor appointments, socialize with other of their own. Our staff, our fellow colleagues, no matter which program or which department you're in, they ask, how can we help? It's a team effort. We all there helping each other out. We are one. The university settlement staff meet participants where they are. We are really making sure that they feel that this is a safe place where they can come and we can listen and together trying to resolve whatever their issue is. I have a tremendous sense of pride and appreciation for our team. We supported each other day after day. It really makes me pause and appreciate the power of us. Power means that there's structure. Power means there's consistency. Power means that there's love. Knowing that when we do pull together to work together, we can get through crises. It's just such an inspirational look at who we are as a community. Wow. Wasn't that great? I'm really inspired by my colleagues who truly exemplify the power of us. Human beings contain multitudes, but systems are too often biased toward one-size-fits-all solutions. At University Settlement, we know that human connection can create exponential value, and that engaging our neighbors in their powerful individuality helps build stronger communities honoring difference, insisting on complexity, and forging relationships are the pillars of our approach, which we've honed in our neighborhoods for the last 135 years. That's the power of us. For those of you that have already donated, I thank you. If you haven't yet, you can do so at any time this evening without leaving the page. I'd like to welcome Melissa Asi, Chief Executive Officer of University Settlement. Hey, Melissa. Thank you so much, Baba. As you heard, I'm Melissa Ossi, the CEO of University Settlement. We're an organization that works with 40,000 people every year in our neighborhoods in the Lower East Side in Brooklyn. We work to ensure that our neighbors of all ages, from the youngest babies to the oldest members of our families, have everything they need to thrive. Food, education, mental health care, the arts, community, self-determination, and more. Tonight, we're celebrating the power of us, the exponential human value created when we forge relationships and stand up for what's right together. University Settlement cannot do this work without the funds to support it, and we rely on our generous donors. This evening's event is one of the most important fundraisers of the year, and we want to thank everyone who contributed. I also want to thank our board of directors, our event committee, and this evening's top sponsors, Alan Winters and Sharon Felzer, David Shapiro and Liz Lang, and Benjamin Shaw and Jeannie Munn, who are also our event chairs. A little later tonight, we're excited that you will have the opportunity to interact with our special guests in your choice of one of three Zoom breakout rooms. Margaret Chin, is the former city council member for District 1. She's a passionate advocate for a more humane and sustainable New York and was a great partner for University Settlement and our neighbors during her more than a decade in office. Dr. Torian Easterling is the first deputy commissioner and the chief equity officer for the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. 
Dr. Easterling and University Settlement have partnered closely on efforts to break through barriers to provide our neighbors with more equitable access to health and mental health care. And Angelica Mondal Vianya, one of our performers tonight, is an accomplished artist and educator who grew up in University Settlement's art programs. And like us, she's committed to creating opportunities for people to explore who they are and what they're experiencing through artistic practice. And now it is my honor to introduce this evening's honoree, award-winning poet and best-selling author, Kathy Park Hong. We are thrilled to present Kathy with the Charles B. Stover Award, named for one of University Settlement's founders, a person who spent his life advocating for and often meaningfully achieving social reform in New York City. He was a quiet activist who got things done, whose commitment to University Settlement's communities never wavered. And in tribute, we give this award to leaders who have brought real transformational change to their communities. We're grateful to present it tonight to a writer whose courageous and unflinchingly honest work is raising people's consciousness of the racism, violence, and disregard that Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders face in this country. A professor at Rutgers Newark University and the poetry editor for the New Republic, she's also published three books of poetry, including Dance Dance Revolution. In the spring of 2020, she published Minor Feelings and Asian American Reckoning, which became a New York Times bestseller, a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, won the National Book Critics Circle Award for Autobiography, and earned her recognition on Time's 100 Most Influential People of 2021 list. As I read the essays in this book, I was struck by their honesty and vulnerability by the tremendous literary and personal risks they take, and by the insights they offer into a set of emotions that are rarely acknowledged, let alone discussed. And as a white person facing and trying to undo racism in myself and the institutions I'm part of, I found it necessary and instructive. I also know that many members of the university settlement team and community are deeply affected by the wisdom it contains. So thank you, Kathy, for your work. And thank you for joining us tonight and accepting University Settlements Charles B. Stover Award. Kathy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're thrilled to be able to honor you and to get to speak to you in person. In Minor Feelings, you write that, quote, in college, you are more interested in art than activism. But really, when we read your essays, um, they feel like they're both. And I just wanted to know, sort of now, uh, at this point in your life, how do you see your, your activism in relationship to your artistic practice as a poet and a writer of essays? Thank you for your question. And I'm really honored, uh, uh, you know, to be here and be celebrated by uh, University Settlement. And it's such an important uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, I see art and activism to be just interrelated, deeply, deeply connected. I mean, I think that first of all, art is activism. It is a form of activism. Uh, and the way it is a form of activism is that art has the ability to change the way we think. It has the ability to change our consciousness. Um, if we were uh, seeing the world with uh, a veil thrown over the world. The art has uh, the capability of kind of ripping that veil away to uh, show us what that world is. So it's it's a form of truth telling, and that's really, really very much important. Changing that change in con consciousness is what brings us freedom, you know. So, and um, you know, I think that the activism that uh, that university university settlement does with education um, and all of the programs that sometimes the gov our government fails at providing for us uh, helps uh, is absolutely uh, works in conjunction with our art as well. You know, sometimes art and writing um, art is necessary to show us what is missing from our lives, what is missing from society. It also shows us alternate modes, 
alter, alternate models of what a society can be. And therefore it gives us hope. Every year at University Settlement, we engage thousands of people of all ages to navigate through crises, um, but also just the stresses of life in New York City and including the added stresses imposed by poverty. Mm -hmm. And you are so um, clear, open, and vulnerable in your writing about your own experience of depression and the challenges you experienced accessing mental health care that was right for you, as well as sharing about generational trauma inflicted upon Korean and Korean American people through the war, through displacement, through racism. And um, you've established yourself as an artist and an advocate who's seeking to create change. And I wonder if you see a relationship between caring for one's mental health and um, being able to be a person who takes action in the world. Absolutely. I think you need to. Uh, be in a, a mentally stable place in order to take action. I don't see how it can be otherwise. It does seem like we see mental health as secondary to, I don't know, physical health or physical well-being, but those are also, you know, as we know, interrelated. Uh, racial stress, of course, uh, affects the heart. It affects uh, you know, stress, you know, I could, you know, um, at least in the black community, um, there have been more instances of, of you know, heart disease because yeah. of, of racial stress. I will say with Asian Americans, uh, they are the least likely to seek out mental health, uh, uh, um, help from the mental health community. Um, there's also a really high suicide rate among Asian Americans, especially Asian American youth. It's a big problem. And we have to really, I try to really communicate to Asian Americans how absolutely necessary it is, how absolutely necessary, men, uh, necessary me mental health is. A lot of you know, immigrants, especially low income immigrants have been driven to extreme that I think like a typical American who've been here for generations really have no understanding of, you know, it's like, even if they come here voluntarily, it's still just an extreme displacement. And if I were to use my own family as an example, um, you know, they were, uh, you know, they had, you know, with my parents, they went through war, uh, poverty, um, all kinds of duress, and then they come here and they started from zero. And I just can't imagine, but then they also refused uh, any kind of therapeutic help. That's gonna affect you as a person. And it's important to talk about it. It's important to seek help. It's, you know, because um, only when you feel better about yourself, mind and body, do you feel ready to change the world so that, um, all of us have that same sense of well-being. So you said that you wrote minor feelings for your daughter and to change the country's consciousness. And you quote your friend, Pragita Sharma, as saying that, quote, Americans have an expiration date on race, the way they do for grief. At some point, they expect you to get over it, mm -hmm. end quote. And so with grief and in complete solidarity, it's important, I feel that that I and we tonight acknowledge that as we speak, Asian American and Pacific Islanders in New York and across the country are experiencing a heartbreaking increase in escalation of racist violence and harassment and take a beat about that. Um, and I would love to hear what you think are some ways that you hope university settlements in our community, including everyone that's gathered with us tonight will join you in the fights that your book takes up, which is against racism, against forgetting, and against the expiration date. When uh, there are less uh, stories about the anti-Asian hate in uh, newspaper, um, you know, in media, and it's not circulating in uh, on Twitter or Instagram, I'm absolutely grateful for nonprofit organizations um, that are still doing the work to um, provide shelter for victims and to amplify uh, their stories. It's the same with university set settlement as well by uh, providing a, a, a safe space for these Asian immigrants.
Um, and that's what's absolutely important about organizations like University Settlement is that sense of community, because I think during this year of anti-Asian hate, a lot of Asians also, of course, compounded by the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, Asians feel very alone. They feel yes. very, very alone. They feel very isolated. And what University Settlement provides through, uh, you know, for their youth and for their um, program for, um, you know, older elderly immigrants is that they provide spaces where people can get together, you know, through arts, education, and so forth. And it, that is absolutely so important. It's nourishing for the soul. And, um, you know, and it's hopefully it's also a place of activism where they will. Right. So we're really hoping and looking forward to this spring and summer as a moment when we can very actively welcome and activate the neighborhood to bring people back and all the neighborhoods that we serve. I think you, you hit it right on the head. Kathy, thank you so much for your time. It's such a pleasure to speak with you. And thank you, thank you for being with us tonight and being our Charles B. Stover honoree. We're really, really proud of your work and so grateful for your, um, your contributions. I'm honored to, thank you so much. Now I'm gonna turn it over to two exceptional performers who've captured the spirit of university settlement and our deep connection to the arts. Drew Drake is an actor and poet who's performed original poetry at venues throughout the country. He teaches at NYU's Tisch School of the Arts and was a teaching artist with the Performance Project at University Settlement. Angelica mondal Vianya is a dancer trained in ballet, Afro-Caribbean dance, modern dance, and more. She has danced with Ballet Hispanico and serves as an instructor and teaching artist throughout the city. She's also currently a Performance Project Fellow. Please enjoy their beautiful work. When the community decides it's time to buy back the block, the soil rejoices. The electricity pulsing through the roots find its way to crack even the concrete. The concrete decides to dream bigger than a rose. So what a rose is the idea that we as seeds can become more than what was plotted here before. When the community decides it's time to buy back the block, the trees sing a different song. They realize even the weeds have needs. So they re-examine language, replace I with we, and now the oxygen understands how to replenish us all collectively. When the community decides it's time to buy back the block, the rocks re-examine safety. A constant question of police that lives in us all, wondering why some rocks are deemed sharper than others, why some rocks have a backup plan and others are allowed to fall in this moment, is a process of shedding, of stripping down power, of acknowledging privilege, of pushing us rocks all closer together. When the community decides it's time to buy back the block, there's a value of birds of all ages. Us birds realize that learning doesn't stop at a certain date. We realize that education is ever evolving. The bright clouds are ever changing. And us birds realize that sun itself ain't the only teacher. Us birds will become our own school, flying individually, but realizing that the distance of how far we travel is based on how well we work together collectively. And is that not community? When the community decides it's time to finally buy back the block, we can finally say, who keeps us safe? And know by the world we've created and the work that we've done, that the answer is finally us. I hope you're as moved and inspired as I am by what you saw tonight. Fostering connection, fighting structural inequity, and creating opportunities for joy are all in a day's work at University Settlement. If you feel inspired to support us tonight, 
please click on the donate button below. It's now my honor to invite you all to participate in conversations focused on some of the work we're doing in our neighborhoods with assistance from the special guests that Melissa mentioned. You can choose to Zoom about effective community advocacy with former city council member Margaret Chin, or choose the room with Dr. Torian Easterling to discuss issues of health and mental health equity, or head into the arts room to have a live talk back with our performer Angelica Mandol Vianya. Each room run, will run for approximately 15 minutes. Now don't be scared. Just take a look at the buttons below on this same page and click on one of the choices, which will take you directly to your Zoom room. If you have any trouble at all, send an email to Carolina Cortas at ccuartas at universitysettlement.org. That's ccuartas at universitysettlement.org or feel free to send a message through the chat box on the right. Once you're in Zoom, don't be shy. We encourage you to turn your cameras on. Our three rooms are, one, effective community advocacy with former council member Margaret Chin. Two, health and mental health equity with Dr. Torian Easterling. And three, arts and community engagement with Angelica Mandol Vianya. Now one note on logistics. Once you're in Zoom, you won't see me anymore. So before you'd go, I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to everyone who joined us tonight and to everyone who has donated. And thank you also to everyone who shared their stories. We have so many amazing and resilient people here with us tonight. You're also crucial to everything that we do at University Settlement. As I send you on your way, I hope that you're moving on with a greater understanding of why University Settlement does this work and why we do it this way. It's because when we approach our neighbors holistically with a wide range of complementary services, with teams who approach their very different work from a shared perspective, and with people who are empowered and encouraged to connect the dots, everything we do is more successful. That is the power of us. Before we close this part of our program, I want to wish you all good health, and I look forward to the time when we can gather again in person which I know will be very soon. Thank you again and have a fun and engaging evening.